So in front of you is an item you guys have been asking about a while. You've seen it for a year or so. Uh, occasionally I'm out sawing a branch or, or getting some firewood and you guys are asking what I'm using. And so I've used this for quite a little while. And it is the Grips S. I believe it's Salcoa is the brand that makes them. I purchased this through Survival Metrics. And uh, it's an interesting little piece of gear. Uh, it sort of blends that wilderness versus you know urban survival kit if you want to put something together and later on we're going to put a uh, a small saw sort of comparison together and I'll put a link up there when that's available but uh, it, these are two handles that are tapped for small little screws uh, they do countersink in there um, you can see when it's put together these two here raise up quite a bit which I didn't really care for. Um, it is made out of, I believe, 6061 aluminum. Now, as it comes, it comes with this little lanyard here, and it gives you this disc. Well, as you can see, this disc, although, you know, fairly sturdy for its thickness, um, has not really survived me trying to screw these things in tight. Most of the things you're going to do with this, you don't have to get it super tight. Uh, in order to use the saw, which I'll show you here in a little bit, uh, you definitely want it getting tighter. So, uh, sort of the comical thing about this is I end up having to use um, my skull tool uh, with the flat bit attachment on there. And so, uh, let me take this apart. I've got a separate little bit here. I'm kind of loosening these two up. So, when you loosen the two center ones, what you get are... Um, you know the holes drilled out so that you can fit uh, multiple quarter-inch hex uh, driver action. Just unscrew that a little bit. So if you are working on a project and you want to drill some small holes, whether you're just doing some crafting uh, in camp, um, that's certainly possible. Now it comes with this, which is what kind of keeps the handles together, which is a, a Phillips and flathead. It is a number two Phillips. And 8 to 10 it says. Um, so the comical thing about it is you do get a, a driver included in this kit. However, depending on how tight you have the initial um, you know hardware screwed on, um, you know, you may be able to use this to get that off because I don't usually make those too tight. But you will need a screw to get these apart. So if that is put together and it's done too tightly you won't even be able to get this off without additional uh, hardware. Uh, the other thing is this flathead, as you can see in there, um, does not really fit their screws. If you can see in there, it's too big. So you can't even use their uh, bit that they give you to tighten down other tools like the uh, saws and stuff that I'll show you in a second. But you can, I mean, if, if you want to just carry, you know, a multiple bit driver, such as this small little flat head here on this magnetic tip and you can do that you can easily put these together and zoom out a little bit you know use multiple things I can sit there and use this to drill holes and I can use this to come back and put you know screws through that holes that I just started so I mean it is very you know universal It is pretty cool about all the things it can do um, I will show you in a little bit here the center uh, is has this little hole that's set up for a wire saw which is pretty cool I think the most uh, inventive piece is the slot here at the end uh, there's one slot that goes further back than the other slot and you're going to use a hardware piece there 
as you can see I'm missing one so sometimes I'll steal the center out of here simply because I don't use the wire saw that much so we'll do that today and um, I'm almost certain I can go to a hardware store and, and pick up a few more of those so where the versatility of this thing comes in is you know being able to use smaller uh, reciprocating saw type blades as you'll see that little hook will line up with the, the deeper piece and you can actually force this hardware uh, through these center holes they don't always line up depending on the brand but that'll help lock this into place pretty rock solid and so the reason I was saying it sort of blends that urban is because I can take and I usually just take the little uh, car door edging you can buy at auto parts stores and uh, cover the blades when I put them in my pack but you can see a very well used uh, bimetal blade so you know this can get through metal it can go through PVC you know so if you're putting an urban kit together you know it's a whole lot better than using like vice grips or something like that or without or a little bit of tape um, you know obviously you can just keep this blade it's it's wieldy enough but uh, these things don't weigh much and uh, let's see if we can get this on here so you can put this line it up and then we will screw this down and you'll see through some of the videos and stuff the reason you want this tied down is because otherwise it gets kind of loose and so if we can undo this one of course yeah, I've got it too tight so I'm using a separate screwdriver but because of all the things this thing has the possibility of doing um, you know it definitely kind of redeems itself the fact that you can't use its own hardware to lock it together is kind of silly bear with me while I get this together we'll lock that down so now you have a decent handle and I've got a bimetal blade hooked on here uh, you guys normally see I've got some sort of a pruning blade like a nine inch pruning blade or something like that um, obviously you can get better blades or smaller blades depending if you're doing a lot of green uh, wood for you know shelter building or you want to uh, change the tooth out for more hardwood dry wood uh, for firecraft um, there's some crazy little ripping you know attachments I actually find the pruning one works pretty good and again when we do that comparison with other small saws you'll be able to see how well that works but interesting little little feature I mean with all the hex things that are out nowadays you can put put together a pretty cool little kit um, the handle does work fairly well uh, what you've normally seen me is I'll keep just a big long pruning blade behind the sheath in my knife uh, when I was using the high desert survival knife that's how I kept it and then this just goes in the pack so you can kind of pull that out and you have a small saw and um, it definitely takes up less space than like a folding saw but again we're gonna do a pocket saw comparison so um, you know this stays in here pretty good you get a little bit of movement uh, just the nature of the thing it's basically pivoting on that hole which is why you know depending on how much sawing you have to do um, you want to get that tight in there which is why this disc did not hold up because if you're sawing a bunch of wood for firewood you know you, that didn't quite hold up to the torture test but uh, after that I mean it's, it's a pretty cool idea especially with all the blades out now for reciprocating saws and all sorts of things you can get for them um, the fact that I um, you know it's made out of aluminum and not plastic was a definite plus which means I've not had any issues with these screws stripping out or um, you know anything like that I just you know I did end up losing one who knows when or where uh, that happened but and then uh, I'll put this together and kind of show you how the uh, the wire saw attachment works so you can see in sort of wire saw mode if you will um, you know there's the stop screw in the center uh, it just comes through this center hole and then gets pinched with the hardware here and uh, it is basically just uh, if it'll focus there just like aircraft cable um, I mean that's really kind of the only you know aggressive nature to the cable itself um, one of my favorite wire saws is actually the Ranger Ricks that I've used quite a bit and you can see kind of how it's you know multiple chain links and then each chain link is wrapped in a separate uh, small piece of wire and uh, it is very aggressive and I actually did test this uh, simply by using 
you know, taking this and putting it in the end and using the end ring as sort of a lock on there. And it's not ideal. Uh, it definitely worked. I uh, just, I was basically testing, you know, how good this cable was. This will still g cut through, you know, decent sized logs and, uh, or branches, I should say. Um, you know, but with all the other capabilities, you know, I didn't honestly use the wire saw that much. Um, you can see, especially with, you know, the heat associated with them, um, you know, it gets very difficult after you start using them. They don't really hold their shape. Uh, they kind of start, you know, curling in a certain direction uh, just because of that friction and the heat generated. Um, they're kind of a tangly mess, you know, after you use them. Now, you may find some reviews where people haven't actually even used these, so they're going to tell you that it works great. Um, it definitely cuts, but if I have the choice, I'm just going to carry the saw blades and do it that way. So, mm, don't know if that really, you know, is that great of a feature. So, I mean, the versatility, the innovation is there. I think they've got just a couple of things to work out. Um, you know, something a little more sturdy with here, especially if people are going to be using it with the saw attachment. Um, perhaps maybe send a couple extra hardware pieces because they will be lost uh, whether you want to or not and uh, you know the wire saw it definitely works um, you know if you weren't going to carry a, a saw blade with you um, you know it would be I didn't have any issues with it breaking like I said it just it gets really hot and uh, you know then the cable kind of warps a little bit after you use it so if you're going to use it as sort of a survival kit mentality and it's not going to be used all the time you could probably get away with it especially if you're building like an urban kit you want to get through you know a bimetal for small locks and pvc things and whatever else you want to put in your kit um, you may be able to save some weight i think it's right around 35 bucks so considering it's machined out of 6061 that's not too bad and kind of the you know sky's the limit with imagination on how you want to use it and what kind of bits and things you have in mind for it so not too bad something to look into thanks for watching guys